Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Supply Chain, the card game by Die Bad Games. This game plays one to six players, takes roughly about two hours, and is for ages 12 and up. And in the game Supply Chain, you are going to be attempting to create a supply chain with your businesses, your contracts, and other locations you'll be utilizing. Your objective is to get through the entire deck here of sellable cards and achieve the most victory points in your supply chain. Take out all your contracts and businesses and separate a lot of space on the table and begin to play this big business game where you're attempting to be the strongest monopoly on the board. To begin the game supply chain, you'll start by giving yourself a main office. Then go ahead and give each player two special offices. Finally, they're going to be getting a starter location like the tavern, which has a start location icon on the top left hand corner. Give every single player a random business plan and then remove all the rest of the special offices and starter locations and the business plans and put them back into the box. Then go ahead and give every single player $15,000. Have one player designated as the shopkeep and have them shuffle the rest of the cards, including the main businesses that were not, or main offices that were not used, and go ahead and place them in this deck. Shuffle and then deal six cards out to form the supply. Then, optionally, you can either put out all the contracts within reach and easy to see with, the, with all players, or put them in a stack, as well as your boats, refrigeration trucks, large trucks, and small trucks, and anything else you probably will not need for the game. Then you can go ahead and begin by selecting a first player. As the first player, you're going to be able to take two actions on your turn, and there are eight total actions, which I have in my handy dandy sheet over here, so I did not forget them. The first is, first is you can purchase. You can purchase from the supply. There are six of them here that are available, and they have their costs written on the bottom right-hand corner. If you don't want to buy those, however, you can buy the trucks and boats here, and there's a cost at the bottom right. And then finally, contracts. The cheapest ones, they're not businesses or anything like that, but you'll be able to attach them onto your board to kind of create supply chain links and there are a lot of different resources that you'll need for different buildings that you'll be able to purchase and place down here but remember supply is limited. If you don't want to purchase you can instead go ahead and sell. You can sell certain cards by either uh, swapping buying and trading with other people. You can trade one for one or trade for the cost of a card to get the cards that you need from other players. So basically trading. And the next thing you can do is you can swap. You can exchange with uh, the listed uh, cards here. These are the listed cards and you have cards in your hand. And let's say you have one that's worth 500. You can exchange the $500 card for anything here that is less than $500. And that way you can get cards you need, but at a rate that is more affordable to the house, more beneficial to the house. The next thing you can do is place. Uh, placing is pretty simple. Now you're going to basically be making supply chains or you're going to be placing down a business. Um, uh, certain businesses will require certain things. So for instance, if I have this diner here, it's going to require meat, fish, tables, and uh, grains or bread, it looks like. And you're going to need those. So you'll buy, be buying those on your turn and you can never take more than one action. Uh, you can't take an action more than once every turn, but you'll be buying these and eventually you'll get enough to place a chain down. When you do, you can place the business down. Businesses will be able to produce you either uh, resources and or money that you'll be able to utilize to buy more businesses and of course to chain other businesses. When you place, you have to always make sure you meet all the requirements of the card. If the card requires a truck, you must have a truck in the chain in order for it to be considered attached. Uh, you can't have like a, a truck and then fishing grain and then place a building down after that because it's not attached to the truck. The truck needs to be attached to the business that it is associated with. And the same is said for all businesses that have a requirement there. And that's basically how it works. Either place down a chain of things that link together to create, uh, to form a business or just simply place a business if you have the requirements already met in the chain. The next thing you can do is gain uh, revenue. Uh, basically you're going to be creating a line from your main office and then you can go in any direction as long as you want, as long as there's product, uh, producing being made uh, on, this, on, on that specific street. So you'll be following a street, going along the pattern or path, and you're getting money. Uh, and they're going to give you certain production or produce. Uh, like for instance here, this department store is not going to produce any resources, but it does give you $600. So if on your path, this is on the way, you're going to score yourself $600 from the bank that you can use to purchase unique and new businesses, contracts, and of course, vehicles.
Uh, the next thing that you can go ahead and do is reorganize. <laughs> you have to reorganize the cards sometimes in your space in order to get things that you want um, situated. So for instance, if you have a business that requires a meat and one of your other businesses already has a meat there, but it doesn't link to the supply chain that you want it to, you can kind of reformulate it so that it works for you so it will meet both of the supply chain demands. And reorganizing is a pretty simple, straightforward action, but can take a little bit of time and getting used to how you want to kind of organize what you've got, especially based on the board you have. Uh, the next thing you can do is close. You can return a card to your hand, basically. You know, if you don't want something, you can always get put it back to your hand, which is also said for like extra cards. You can always discard extra cards as a free action. If you do not, uh, if you meet or exceed the hand limit, you might want to get rid of cards. Um, and then, of course, there's the blind draw. Uh, this one here is where you'll draw a card from this deck and then you're going to pay for it. You have to, and it'll cost you $50 less. And if you can't pay for it, there's going to be a fine for you. Uh, but in general, you're gonna be paying less for the cards on top, but you do not know what they are going to be. And those are pretty much all the different things you can do. There's quite a lot of things, but the main idea in the game is buying anything you want for the cost, or from the top of the deck, trading with other players, reorganizing and moving around certain things. You're able to return and discard cards, and then you're going to be placing, which is the majority of your actions other than buying, placing down chains and placing down businesses. You'll take two actions, they can never be the same, and then of course you will pass. Now I believe that if you purchase from over here, you're also gonna be able to purchase from over here because buying a contract and buying one of these businesses are two separate things, but I could be wrong about that based on the rules. Um, but I'm pretty sure you can, you can buy. So as long as you're doing two different sorts of actions uh, per turn, you're going to be golden. You'll pass and each player is gonna take their turn. And after a round is finished, all of these cards from the supply here are gonna rotate one clockwise. So basically once they rotate, on the fourth round, you'll see them slowly start to go all the way around. If they ever come back to their face up side, those will be discarded and you'll be able to actually get those from the discard pile for cheaper as well when buying certain cards. So you're always gonna have refreshing cards popping up whether you're buying them or whenever they come to the refresh phase and they come back to their main facing forward set. Uh, and the game is going to end when this deck of cards cards runs out. And once this deck is out, you're going to then tally up all the points on your board. You should have a pretty large supply chain board with tons of different connections. You'll gather up all of the victory points that you have acquired, which is in the top right hand corner, as well as any bonuses from things like your business plans. And you'll be able to utilize those points to hopefully control the game and have the most victory points by the end of the supply chain. Supply chain is a tableau management tile placement game. While yes, you are utilizing cards, the fact still remains you are placing them down onto the board, creating little squares that kind of benefit you in your supply chain. Uh, in the game, you're going to be utilizing chains, and these things have certain chains. You have to link them up based on the placement rules, and you can't forget that. Like, for instance, a boat has only three specific chain locations, whereas your main office is going to have four, and some other ones could be less, or they could be more, and they could be in different areas. Uh, you're also going to be trying to manipulate the market to give yourself the most money as possible, as also to connect your chains correctly. Uh, uh, placing in this game is the most important, it's the most key, and it's the most complex. You have to make sure that all the things that you need are connected in a chain before you can place down your business. You're also able to swap your contracts out for other businesses provided you meet that chain requirement. It's gonna kind of give you additional benefits, bonuses, but also still making sure that their chains are connected. So for instance, if you have, I don't know, shoes, and it attaches to make maybe a, I don't know, a mobile office. It's not going to, but if it did, it connected with food and whatnot. Uh, and then you had a shoe store and uh, you met all the requirements, you could then go ahead and take this away and place it down as long as the chain is still intact to help the, the mobile office and to help this as well. And that's how you're gonna gain bonus points in the game. And it's all about manipulation and management that's going to score you a lot of points in this game. You're also gonna be doing things like checking different locations for street names like Canal Street. You'll get a half a point for every property that's on Canal Street uh, and Cartner Street. And so you're gonna be trying to get those locations, placing them down, formulating streets to allow you to score extra bonus points for your bonus objectives in the game. But the main way you score is big locations. Locations that cost a lot 
for their requirements. They also give a lot when they produce, like this department store is worth 10 points. That is a ton of points, but it is a heavy, long chain in order to get what you need. And so that's what you're mainly trying to do throughout the game. You'll trade and barter with other people. You'll be getting cards from the top of the deck here on the occasion or waiting for contracts to come back to be available so that you can utilize them. You'll use certain types of vehicles, and sometimes you'll have those vehicles you need on the board here, and you'll need to switch them around to kind of make sense of it all, but you have to keep everything intact to make sure that it all works out. The supply chain must continue to be moving. It reminds me of this like fact toy game I played on the computer that you're trying to kind of create factories and they all have to link together and the production has to work together. It's almost like a I don't know, owning one of those like McDonald's or whatnot. It's like a supply chain and there's routes that need to be taken and, and produce that needs to be had in certain locations in order to reach those locations that you need to reach in order for you to continue using that business. Otherwise it kind of goes extinct. And there's just a lot of things you can do. And there's a lot of actions you can do as well, but you're mainly focusing on buying, selling cards. And then on the occasion with your own machinations, you can kind of utilize the other actions to benefit you on the board here. Uh, the artwork is great. Basically, it's going to be a lot of locations. If it's going to be a lumber yard, it'll be a picture of a lumber yard. It's a mobile office, it'll be a picture of a mobile office. I'm not sure where the art comes from. If it's like stock art, uh, I'm not too certain, but it does the job for what the game needs, and especially because you're going to need a lot of information on these cards here. Uh, it's not the most pretty as far as graphic design goes, but as far as like... Uh, meeting the requirements in order to play the game correctly. It does an excellent job of that, which you'd be surprised because there's so much stuff going on with this card that you need to make sure that everything kind of lines up and makes sense. Another thing with this game too is you're going to be needing money and producing specific chains of currency is important just like it is important to create those supply chains in order to meet uh, the needs of victory points throughout the game. <laughs> uh, so that being said, all the cards and stuff like that looks like it's probably made from the Game Traffic Crafter. I believe this is a prototype, so I'm not going to be so heavy on reviewing that um, as far as what the main game is going to look like. Maybe it's going to look like this one here. Maybe there's some changes that will be made to this game here. But all the cards work. All the tokens work perfectly fine. You can either use the one side, which is going to be the text side for the currency, or the numerical side. There's cards that will allow you to utilize extra chains. At a, uh, the token tiles will allow you to utilize extra chains at a cost. Basically, you'll be losing three victory points for that. Um, and then of course there's extra currency from 500 all the way up to a thousand. This game is long. Uh, this game can run upwards of two, maybe even three hours because this deck is very large. That's my main nitpick about this game is it's a uh, Almost too long. Uh, you're expecting to play a tableau management tile placement game, and this starts to run up to Twilight Imperium lengths. <laughs> uh, that being said, my suggestion is just to simply take this deck and like cut it in half. There's no need to have additional cards in here. There's no like specific requirement as to why you'd have to have this entire deck. If you want, you can just simply kind of randomize it. And if you want a shorter game, just simply choose a stack from this deck here, and that will formulate a shorter gameplay for you and your pals. Um, the second little nitpick I have, or I guess something that I more so not really even nitpick, but like you have to be aware, you need to have enough table space to play this game because these grids are going to start getting massive. These chains, your chain can go really long, which is actually really cool to think about and how things function in real life and what you need in order to kind of make a business function in general. But on a table, when you're playing with six players, it is going to get massive. And you're going to start rearranging your pieces and your board and all that if you're not prepared for the length and the um, amount of space that this game is going to take up. There is a lot of strategy in this game. There's a lot of thought and discussion. There's sometimes going to be trades or begs, as I would say. Please don't take the last fish. I need it. And it's going to be specific. I need that specific diner because it's going to give me newspaper, which lets me use my newspaper route. But it's also going to give me the money I need for the next thing I want to buy. And so that stuff happens throughout the game. Uh, you're focusing on your business plan when you can, but these are kind of random. When they show up, you're going to hopefully take those locations that are going to give you that extra like avenue or story street and whatnot that you can utilize for the game. It's a nice little add-on. Most of the different actions are nice little add-ons as well, and the fact that you only have to focus on quite just, just a simple few is, is nice too. I wish they had some type of card that would have the actions listed on them, so I did not have to sneak a peek at my chart here that has all eight different things I had to memorize, and uh, memory is not my key key thing I'm good at here. Uh, but otherwise, this is a solid game. It's a lot of fun. It's very tactical. It's very strategic. And there's a lot of choice involved. There's a ton of different 
types of resources and a limited amount of that supply and you have to kind of mix and match the cards in your hand that you want to utilize and don't want to utilize and when you can't make a business happen you just can't and that has a lot of real world uh, sense to this game. This game has a lot of real world like um, connection. You're going to feel like uh, this is kind of like a thing that people have to think about when creating certain chains of supplies and commercial real estate and all that kind of stuff and it works very well. I enjoyed this game quite a bit. My main thing was uh, after playing with it through the first time with all of these cards, I had to cut it in half. It was just way too long. Personally, I prefer it at a smaller amount of deck, especially with a uh, smaller amount of players. If you have a larger number of players, it might go quicker because there's more people taking things from the deck, but otherwise, just keep it small, keep it shorter, and the game is going to be a solid uh, pickup, in my opinion. I, re I really enjoyed this game here. This is going to have a very specific niche audience, I think, especially if you're going to play the long version of the game with the table requirements and the amount of thinking that goes in, into this game and choices you have to make. There's always going to be one player that's probably drastically better than the others based on their knowledge of like how chaining things are going to work in the game and hand manipulation and when's the best time to get the resource because there's lots of really good actions but there's always generally a best option and uh, players will get better as they play this game as they continue forward uh, but it might produce some interesting results and people wanting to get better at the game as well. So anyway that's my thoughts on Supply Chain the card game. If you're interested there's a link down below. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Supply Chain by Die Bad Games. If you're interested, like I said, go ahead and check that out. You can also go ahead and check out our unfilteredgamer.com website, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell notification to see more videos just like this one. Comment down below what you thought about this game, whether it's something you'd like to pick up. And if you'd like, join us on our live stream every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST, where you can see us play more games just like this one here on there as well as we give away certain things like our moonshell dice and games and uh, little small giveaways there and there but anyway that's pretty much all i got for you and as always i hope to see you guys building out your supply chain next time